here we want to try to graph a piecewise function. And so the way piecewise functions work is they're saying, okay, you use this rule if as long as you put in anything x, when x isn't 2. But if you try to plug in x is 2, you get this. So we've already done evaluating them. So picture for graphing, it's the same kind of thing. You're just plugging in some points and then getting out some y values or some g of x values. So let's say if I plug in 0. Well, 0 is not equal to 2, so I should use this rule. So if I put 0 for x, I get 0. Let's say if I put in 3. Well, 3 isn't 2, so I should use this rule again. So if I put in x is 3, I get 3, since it's just x. g of x equals x. All right, what if I put in, let's say, negative 1? Well, negative 1 isn't 2, so I'm using this rule again. So you notice you're basically using that line, that rule, all the time, except for if I try to plug in 2. If I try to plug in x is 2, that's the only time I use this rule instead. This one is fixed, right? It doesn't even have an x in it. It's just always negative 2 when you plug in 2. So then let's try graphing these points. So 0, 0 is here. Negative 1, negative 1 is here. 3, 3 is here. So notice they all fall in the same straight line. The only difference is this one point, negative 2, negative 2. So over 2 and down 2. Well, what does that mean for this picture? It's basically saying no matter what I plug in, I'm going to get this line, except for this one point. If I put 2 in here, I don't get 2. I get negative 2. And so piecewise, you're putting together a bunch of pieces of different functions. So this one works out where the whole thing looks like this line, y equals x or g of x equals x, except for this one oddball point that's over here. All right, so let's try another one that has some greater than, less than to it. So we'll say this one is f of x equals 5, if we're putting in numbers that are less than or equal to negative 3, it equals this line equation, right, because mx plus b is slope of negative 1, y-intercept of 2. But that's only if we put in numbers between negative 3 and 3, not including negative 3, but including 3. And then 2, if we put in anything bigger than 3. All right, so picture as a table then of some points, some x, y points, or some x, f of x points. If I put in something smaller than negative 3, like let's say negative 4. So that's in this group. Negative 4 is less than or equal to negative 3, so I use this rule, so my output's 5. Same thing, if I put in negative 3, that's less than or equal to negative 3, so I'm using this rule, so my output's 5. All right, what if I put in, let's go something bigger than 3. We'll do the constant outputs first. So if I put in 3, notice how that's technically in this group. So this one is one that you had to use the top rule. If it helps organize too, you can even mark off what pieces they came from. So this is all part of this first piece. All right, if I put in, let's say, 3. That isn't included in this one. See how it's strictly greater than? So that puts me in the middle. And so I get negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. All right, what if I put in like 0? That's in between negative 3 and 3. So I get something like 0 plus 2, so 2. And I could go all the way down to almost negative 3, but I can't quite get there. So there's going to be this line part here. All right, what if I put in numbers that are bigger than 3? Like if I put in 4, that's bigger than 3. So use this rule, so I get 2. If I put in 5 bigger than 3, so I use this rule. All right, so I have three pieces here. So if I go to graph these, and I know where they kind of start and stop, sometimes it helps to even kind of like visualize a little dotted line at 3 and negative 3, kind of breaking this whole thing up. Okay, so my first group. I get negative 4, 5, so back 4 and up 5. I get negative 3, 5, so back 3, up 5. And notice negative 3 is the borderline of that, so I can only go up to that point. 
any numbers that are less than negative 3 all have outputs of 5, so that makes it kind of a horizontal line. All right, then let's look at this one. Also notice it's going to be a horizontal line because it's just y equals or f of x equals 2. But it starts out at, oh, and then notice this is a filled in circle too because negative 3 is included in this. All right, this one I get points like 4, 2, and 5, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 2, and 5, 2. Well, where does that go to? It really starts out at 3, but it's not including 3. So make sure I put an open circle, and I get a horizontal line there. All right, so then the only thing I have left essentially to graph is what does this middle portion look like? Well, I have a couple points on it. I know that I have 3, negative 1, so over 3, down 1. And that one's included, right? Because I can put 3 in there. It's less than or equal to 3. And then 0, 2 is x is 0, and I go up 2, so here. All right, and then I can't put negative 3 in here, but let's just say if I could, what would I end up getting? So if I put something really close to negative 3, that would be negative negative 3, so it would turn to 3 plus 2, so 5. So be careful about those. This point isn't actually on there. It's just almost on there. It's like an open point. But notice how that coincides with this one, this negative 3, 5 that I got off this. So there's like a closed point on this on top of the open point from this line. So if I connect it, so there's the three pieces of my piecewise. I follow a different rule up to negative 3, then a different rule from negative 3 to 3, and then a different rule if I put in numbers after 3.